Hi guys, it's Jamie here. And from the goodies that I was sent by Red Dot Books Box of Delights and a bit of my own stash, I've made this Christmas journal. I want to show you how it quickly works. If we open up this, we have multiple stacking envelopes with journaling cards or belly band areas. You can see you've got cards here, you've got a cards here, you've got original Victorian ephemera here, which is stuck to the front of an envelope that's got more journaling cards. This one has a large journaling card and then you come to the end and then it goes back or meant to go back alternately and ties up. When you open the journal itself, which has its own tie, you have a large pocket on the inside front cover, which has another envelope, which has a flip envelope and more ephemera, a belly band and more journaling tags. You then have some journaling pages, which have pockets in them, plain decoration, tuck spots with little notebooks, tags and tuck spots and this is all original music score, German book pages, that type of thing. This is a journaling spot on top of a dictionary page, just the dictionary page and then a bit of decoration, some plain paper here we have a pocket with some more tags that you can write on and here again another pocket, decoration and a journaling spot. And on the back cover we have a large pocket and a couple more mini notebook type things. You could add more to that, there's plenty of space to add more, as you can see it's not gaping open. That is the project that we're making today. Starting a Christmas project early because I received a box of delights from Red Dot Books and I said I'd go through the contents, pull some bits out and make a small folio or journal for Christmas. In addition to what I have from the folio, I've also got two pieces of A4 or US letter sized craft card. You could use Amazon packaging, you could use cereal boxes, that type of thing. This is just for my convenience. The way we will know our cover size for this journal is by selecting some envelopes. And the box came with quite a selection of different sized envelopes. The reason I'm choosing to use brand new envelopes is because they have these flaps still attached, whereas I tend to slice mine. I have lots of different sizes here, but I have two that are basically the same size. We need to make a cover that these can sit on and still have a bit of a gap around. We will need to get two front pieces and a very small spine. I'm thinking six and a half inches. It's about eight and a quarter down. Here's our two pieces of craft card, and I've also cut a spine of half an inch. To put this together we will be using picture framing tape. We're going to lay the spine roughly in the center of the tape. We're then going to put one side level with the spine and drop that open and repeating that on the other side. So to line it up and drop that open. We can pull these bits round. Now we have our basic folio shape. Next thing we're going to do is take our tape and go round all the edges with the tape. Wrap things over as you go and cover every single edge. Once this has been covered with tape, covering the spine, the inside spine and making sure there's a good coverage on all sides. We're going to use some black cardstock and cut it so that it fits 
just inside all that taped area. You will need four panels to cover each one and because it's made of cardstock it will actually make the cover a bit stronger as well. You can put your panels down using any type of glue, wet glue or score tape. I'm going to use score tape because wet glue if it hits black cardstock really shows up but with score tape once you've committed to where you're placing it of course you cannot change that. The sides have been taped, burnish along the tape and we'll be taking that tape up. In the center I'm going to put some wet glue and then you have to very carefully line it up, get a nice seal, burnish all over, repeat that process on the remaining panels. Once your base is fully covered with the craft card cut another spine and it will be smaller or narrower than the spine that's already in there. This is what we will be attaching some journaling sheets to. What you're going to do to punch your holes in is go at the halfway point and then a little bit below the top and the same level below the bottom. Slimmest one. They're not perfectly lined up, far from it, but they will do. I've selected the papers. It's not a huge amount. One, two, maybe six altogether. And thinking about what's going to show, I'm going to go that way. I do it. So you go down through the middle and through that middle hole. Come up through the bottom hole. That top hole. down through that centre hole but come up the other side so the string is or the wax thread is either side of that central bit pull it tight and tie two or three knots in it off the excess string unclip it glue that into the spine burnish it down, hold it, clip it until it dries. Once the papers are in, it's time to line the inside of the journal cover. I've got these two old scrapbooking papers from Anna Griffin. They're probably seven to 10 years old. I will cut those to size so they line just inside everything that's already been done. It doesn't matter if the black card that's been laid down gets covered up. That was there to make sure there were absolutely no gaps when this went down and also to give the cover itself extra strength. Now the inside has a lining. I'm going to add a couple of tuck spots. That is our two tuck spots on the inside done some bits of journaling and old papers that you can decorate. Before we cover the front in a similar way to that we covered the inside, we want to add a couple of bits of ribbon to the front so that you can tie the little journal up. The halfway point is around 11. I'll put a little bit of silicone glue on the end of the ribbon Take a piece of that black framing, picture framing tape and secure it down with the tape as well. I have two more sheets of this collage Christmas paper. I'll cut those to size and put them over the, the front and back cover and maybe do a contrasting piece to go down the spine. Now the cover is fully done and the inside is as well. We move on to the envelopes. You need six of various sizes and as long as your largest still fits widthways across the base of your cover, 
you're good to go. When you open it, you see white. What you will be doing is opening them out. To open them out, we're just going to take a slither off the sides. Once you've opened it out, you can line them so that anything that is showing will have a paper over it. I could use the shape to cut my paper to size. Once you've done your six envelopes, the next thing to do is to create a base that will fit inside your cover and also your largest envelope can fit behind it. Not go over the whole cover. We're going to be gluing the envelopes to this back piece of paper in the order that they're going to go down. Each one will need to stack over the last one you'll be alternating them over that way. Once those two are down, you then do the next two that way next, then that way, then the last one will be this way, and then the very final one will be this way. So now you need to glue all of that down. I want to make sure I don't, although I want it shut, I don't want it to seal up any part of the envelope. And with them layering on top of each other all the time, they're going to hold, help hold each other in place. And then we will take the next one, which was this big one here. And that will also go on the back. Let me do the next one. Before we put the envelopes on top of the journal, we also need a way to tie the envelopes. So we have a way to tie the journal, and then we want a way to tie the envelopes. We want to secure some ribbon to the base of this. to hold them in place and that will have a side tie. Now these pockets are firmly secured onto the front of the journal. Let's go through how they've been set up. This one is side loading and has a very plain journaling card in it. This side we have a pocket or a tuck spot and a piece of Victorian ephemera with some writing on the back. And we open it out we have a envelope there with nothing in it so we can find another style of a journaling card to put in that one here we have a decorated envelope and then if you go to this side we have a journaling card and I put a tab on it because it does make them easier to pull out another decorated envelope and on this side some decorative papers just with the corners rounded that you can write on. Here we have the Victorian greeting card which is beautiful and very very delicate and it's attached to the front of an envelope. So on the back we have more journaling cards actual card and matching tabs and again you can write on those. This one is a tall envelope so I sealed it up this way and opened it at the top with a keyhole and put a tall journaling card in it and as you can see it's sealed at the back and then we have the cover which you could put something on that you could write on. This folds up like that and does up. In the front pocket, I've added a big envelope 
decorated the front with a Victorian card. And when you open it, you have a flip envelope with more Victorian, one Victorian ephemera, one printed ephemera. Here you have a belly band with more little cards you can write on. And then within the envelope, you have more journaling cards or something you can put pictures on. And that's all been decorated up. Here we have our papers and the back pocket has yet to have anything added. It's time to decorate the papers with bits and pieces that you can either write on or you can tuck things into so you can make extra tuck spots so that you still see the German there. Looking to see what you might want to do with that. I've got large pieces of ephemera and smaller ones. You may see if I've got any lace that you could add to this page. I found a piece of lace that actually fits that gap and have glued it pocket style using silicon glue or Fabri-Tac. And now I have a couple of these that I can put in, which are just printables. I think we'll leave that side as it is. And then we have this. And I think for this one, we will simply put a decoration on it. A little bit Christmassy. I don't think it's necessary to add anything to that side. Here we have some music score and we could put a tuck spot, maybe a diagonal top tuck spot. We'll use the art glitter glue to go down along the top and the side. As soon as it's dry we can put a little something in there. We can use one of our Victorian cards on this side to make a tuck spot and when that's dry we will put something in that one here we could just decorate with some paper on this side we've added a matte journaling space possibly do something similar but not as a journaling space as a decoration on the back on this music page i'm going to put this narnia style paper make it into a pocket we shall come back to that to fill it in a minute i think on the back we could do a pocket this way if i have a suitable something another german page and we have this pretty cutout could go on there. On this side, obviously, we're going to need to cover that up now. We do have that paper and smooth that one on. We need tags and things for these pockets. Probably could do with a ribbon adding to it just one of those tags. To fill this up, I'm using some spare papers from the project so far. that have been used on the envelopes and decorating those. So we have this pocket at the back. I've made a couple of very plain little booklets. You could decorate the front. We also have a couple of another booklet and a journaling card and I think we had a spot for these. We've got this tuck spot here so I've got a little booklet there and then we have the tuck spot there and then I think that's pretty much apart from some ribbons pretty much done. That is quite a decent sized Christmas journal when you consider how many tags and booklets and journaling cards are in there. And it has original ephemera and yet it's not overly large. If you have enjoyed this video, please do all the lovely YouTube-y things. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Do take a look at the description below the video for the Facebook group with free printables and Creator Club which supports the making of these videos and is a monthly club 
with exclusive digitals and exclusive tutorials a bit like Patreon. I will see you next time.